Hey, this is Bruce, and it's time to answer some viewer questions, and let's get uh, started right now. The first one comes from Daniel Saunders, who writes, Microsoft is developing a Linux subsystem for Windows 10. It comes as a bit of a surprise, to say the least. Thoughts? No, I, it's not really a surprise. Uh, Satya Nadella has already made it clear that he wants to be very inclusive of the Linux community, and uh, they've mentioned doing some uh, Linux and open source stuff uh, in the Windows subsystem quite some, some time ago. I want to say at a prior build conference, but I might be wrong about that. Uh, it's not like Microsoft is wanting people to ultimately install and run Linux apps on a Windows computer, but uh, given time, who knows what people will be able to do. It's more about being inclusive to open source developers in the Linux community, uh, giving them a familiar set of tools to work with, but yet stay within that Windows ecosystem. So. I just think it's a brilliant uh, thing for Microsoft to do. It makes a lot of sense on different levels. I could actually spend a lot more time uh, going into more detail about it, but ultimately, not really a big surprise. I'm actually surprised it took this long for Microsoft to do it. I think it's a good thing. Uh, how well it works out for Microsoft in the future, I don't know. Okay, the next question comes from XBNPC writes, guys, three 25 inch 1440p monitors with slim bezels, an IPS or a 31, 34 inch ultra wide 1440p. Uh, I do gaming and video production on three 23 inch 1080p TN panels now, and I love having all the vertical real estate. Remember that this is 48 to 9 versus 21 to 9 aspect ratio. Well, an ultra wide is actually 21 to 9 ratio, but uh, irregardless, or that's not a real word, I'm regardless, <laughs> catch myself still doing that from time to time. I also use VSR to render games at even higher resolutions, and I hear that it's not compatible with ultra-wide screens. Anyway, I'm buying or the other, one or the other real soon. Please weigh in, and thank you for any advice. Okay. Uh, the VSR was at virtual super resolution. It's an AMD technology. It basically upscales the video game to a higher resolution and then outputs at the maximum resolution of the monitor. I kind of think of it as the same thing as when I shoot in 4K and then down res to 1080p. Uh, I've seen some samples of it. I Honestly, folks, I couldn't tell a whole lot of difference. It looked damn near the same to me, but I digress on that. First off, whatever makes you happy. I personally, if it were me, I would go for the 134 inch uh, display and you might even want to conserve uh, you might even want to consider a curved display. Uh, maybe that might give you that sense of immersion that you're looking for, because I have a feeling what you're going to do is kind of have one display in front of you, then two hanging off the side. The benefits of 134-inch display is saving a lot of desktop space because you just have the one larger, wider display. Rather, You're going to take up a lot more room with those three displays. That's one of the benefits. I'm not sure about the VSR technology on whether or not that works, but that's my personal opinion. That's what I would go for. Uh, you might just love having those three 25 inch 1440p displays. I'm not real familiar with those because every 1440p display that I've worked with or seen or used has all been 27 inch. And three 27 inch displays is all, takes up a lot of space on a desktop. But that's, again, a personal thing on me. You know, take a look at them both, and uh, maybe you can go someplace like Fry's Electronics or someplace and actually spend a little bit of time with an ultra-wide and then make that decision. Of course, you might make arrangements. If one doesn't work, take it back and get the other. Ultimately, it's what you enjoy. Hopefully, that answers your question. Okay, the next question comes from Joshua Cho. What do you think of this? A used late 2012 Mac Mini 2.5 gigahertz uh, i5, 500 gigabyte hard drive with 16 gigabytes of SD RAM for $570. Is it worth it? <laughs> no. No, that is not, that's not even a meh kind of deal. That's not a good deal at all. Now you can go on eBay right now and find this model, not with the 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you can find this model with 8 gigabytes of RAM right now for around 400 bucks on eBay, so I think you'd be seriously overpaying for that machine. 
Um, because it says it's got a 500 gig hard drive, we know that that's not the super drive. We know it's not an SSD. That is going to be a 5400 RPM drive, which is going to be like dog slow. Uh, you know, Apple, why do you continue? It's still to this day, they use a 5400 RPM drive. And what is it? The 13 inch MacBook Pro or something? It's ridiculous that, that those are even still a thing. Uh, my advice would be this. The 2012 I, or Mac Mini, I think, is the last year that you could get the quad core uh, i7. And for just a couple hundred bucks more, you can find one on eBay, gently used, 2012 quad core i7, 8 gigs of RAM, a, a fusion drive for around 800 bucks or less, depending on, you know, the offers being made. And that's what I would go for. If that's what you're looking for, a, a Mac Mini, I think you would be much happier saving a few more bucks up and getting one of those than a dual core i5 and a dog, a really just a dog ass slow. All right, that'd be the first thing that would go out. Phew, <laughs> that's got to go. So no, I think you would. You, you, by the time you got a, a you know, SSD and put in it. You know, you're going to be way over the 570. It's just not a good deal at all. Pass, take a pass. No, just pass on that. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, the next question comes from Katz, who writes, Hey, Bruce, I know you only have so much time, but do you ever think about having two channels? Could you continue with the consumer products on one and the business products on another? I just hate to lose one of the few reviewers that I trust. You will be a great business coach, and I wish you the best of luck. Wow, okay, thanks a lot, Katz. Look. Uh, you know, I made that video. I was trying to get you know, all these thoughts in my head across as effectively as possible. Now I've had a few days to sit and think. Let me put it to you this way. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to quit reviewing products, okay? I just felt that the Frugal Tech name was too limiting. I, not for my current subscribers and people familiar with my videos, but it might be off-putting to potential subscribers down the road. And I've gotten feedback from people, and a number of people thought it was a good idea to just use my name, Bruce Naylor, rather than be known as Frugal Tech, and do what I want to do on this channel. And I just said, look, I want to kind of brand myself more on the business side, of, you know, give some business advice on this channel, and kind of be a business coach to people. Uh, you, uh, and being a business coach employing technology and technology for home and work. You, the, the banner that I made, which I did a really crappy job on, if anybody out there is a graphic artist, please get in touch. I would love very much to have a, because I have like zero artistic talent. But you know, what I want to say is Bruce Naylor, technology for home and for work or work and home, because both are interesting to me. And I want to help people start businesses too. I enjoy coaching people on that. But I'm also going to be reviewing technology that I think is interesting. The bottom line is, by calling my channel Bruce Naylor Rad and Frugal Tech, uh, I feel that I can actually explore more things. It's not going to, I'm not going to feel as limited, especially when doing product reviews. Uh, I just feel that it just opens things up for me a lot more. Not that I'm going to go away or I'm going to quit reviewing any kind of products. And I'm, I'm going to be loved reviewing products, but it's going to be the products that I think you folks would find interesting. And uh, I just feel like I have a lot more freedom by using my name. So I'm not going anywhere, not losing a reviewer. To answer your question about two channels, you know, I was just watching a video from David DeFranco. Oh, I love David to death. I think he's a great guy. We've gotten it kind of know each other a little bit through the interwebs and chatted back and forth. But, uh, you know, he's got a great philosophy, which is keep things simple. And that's what I'm trying to do, keeping things simple. And I think having multiple channels is not the way to go for me. It's just not. One channel, Bruce Naylor, I'm going to do a little vlogging, some reviews, some business technology. But my personal brand, who I am as a person, is a coach. I want to coach people on the ins and outs of small business. How's that sum it up? Hopefully that answers that, that comment. All right, the next, uh, actually this is a response to um, uh, My Lemon Blue, who has been a great supporter of the channel. How you doing, um, Lemon Blue? And I just wanted to reply to this comment. It says, I find open source developers' priorities 
and the needs of business dependent on this desktop computing systems is almost completely at odds with each other. I wish I knew how to fix that. Uh, <laughs> that's the trick, isn't it, my lemon blue? Uh, I've had a good fortune knowing a lot of developers over my lifetime because I've worked in technology for many, many, many years. Uh, and I can tell you this much. They're all some of the most wonderful people you ever want to get to know. Very, very intelligent. Some are probably a bit introverted, but I think when you talk about open source, some of these people actually are business. They develop business software during the day, and then for the fun of it at night, they work on open source projects. And for them, it's more of an intellectual challenge and a problem solving thing. Not as much as about the ultimate application or utility of what they're doing, but more just the fun challenge of finding these problems or you know writing uh, you know this uh, algorithm or whatever. That's where their fun is. They're doing this for fun, enjoyment, or to make a contribution. And I think that's the way maybe a lot of open source developers look at things, and they're not really thinking about you know uh, turning their their code into or for commercial purposes where businesses. Why do we exist, a business? We exist to solve problems for people. Well, let me rephrase this. Many of you are going to say, but no, the purpose is to make money. I could go on a whole riff about that. Money is the byproduct, the byproduct of helping people solve problems. That's what it should be. That's what business should be about, is helping people through products or services that make their lives better. See, that's my philosophical thing for the night. However, um, uh, but that's but ultimately businesses require tools to help other people solve problems and to do all the functions that a smooth running business requires. And this is the kind of projects that probably don't pick the imagination of a lot of open source developers. Maybe some even have a philosophical difference of opinion of business and you know how everything should be free and open source but i think that's going to be more an exception than a rule i think most open source people are just part of a community working on problems that they find enjoyable or making a contribution in a way they find interesting and many of them are developers that are paid to write commercial software throughout the day others are doing it for the the fun of it or the learning of it but uh that is just something that I think there's just a particular mindset of those in the open source community, but certainly I know for a fact several people that write commercial code during the day and then work on fun open source projects at night. And uh, so I don't know, maybe that's the problem they'll never uh, get addressed. My Lemon Blue, thank you so much for that comment. That's going to wrap up the uh, Q&A for, uh, for this session anyway. Hopefully we're going to be doing this maybe once a week. That would be a lot of fun. And I always enjoy your comments down below. So until the next one, everybody, Bruce Naylor. Take care, everybody.